It's Badminton World, the show that brings you all things badminton. Over the next 30 minutes, we feature a brief recap of 2012 and what's in store for 2013. A new season that offers a mouth-watering prospect for all, whether they are established stars, rising starlets or newlyweds. We have part two of an exclusive interview with Malaysia's number one shuttler Lee Chong Wei, what cost him the gold medal at the Olympics, was there more to the story? And Badminton World pays tribute to a fine ambassador of the game who has decided to call it a day. Tune in to the new season of Badminton World to find out. The year 2012 offered a pulsating season that culminated with the year-end honours of the BWF Super Series Finals in Shenzhen, China in December. The highlight of which was of course the London Olympic Games, where China made a clean sweep of all five titles. Men's singles ace Lin Dan claimed his second successive gold medal, beating Li Chongwei in a classic final. The gold may have proven to be elusive for Chong Wei, but the world number one would put the defeat behind him as he went on to marry longtime sweetheart and former Malaysian top women's singles player Wong Miu Chu. So it's the new season with new ambitions and new resolutions. Also, we take a look at the next generation of shuttlers, those identified as next in line or pretenders to the throne. The 12 legs of the OSIM BWF Super Series circuit in 2012 saw the honours being equally distributed among five countries in the men's singles, with Chong Wei bagging four titles, emerging tops in Korea, Malaysia, Japan and Denmark on his 30th birthday. Whereas China's Lin Dan was happy with the Yonex All England Championship as his only Super Series title, content to leave compatriot Chen Long storming to the top of the podium in the China Masters, China Open and Hong Kong Open. Completing the victorious group were Thailand's Bunsak Ponsana, Sean Wan Ho of Korea, Simon Santoso of Indonesia and Liu Darren of Malaysia, who became winners of the Singapore, India, Indonesia and French Opens respectively. For Liu Darren, the breakthrough win in Paris signalled his potential as the one to succeed Chong Wei as the next Malaysian number one. I think I'm too happy at the time because I think after I won the point, I fell to the floor. Then I went to hug my coach because I not, don't really expect that uh, at the beginning of the match. I mean, from the first round, then to make it the final and won the match is unexpected. You know? Apart from the annual Thomas and Uber Cups, 2012 gave us the Olympics and the exciting Asiata Cup, which took place in the earlier part of the season and boasted the most prize money ever at a badminton competition. After the sixth Super Series, Olympic fever caught the world and the world watched as China swept all five goals, with Lin Dan beating Chong Wei again in the men's singles final to become the first man ever to win back-to-back -back Olympics men's singles gold and cementing his place as the best ever at just 29 years old. After the Games, the Super Series produced some surprising results and a new star. The China Masters turned another clean sweep for the home side, with Chen Long and Wang Yihan taking the singles, while the likes of Zhang Nan, Ma Jin and the young Bao Yi Xin did enough to take the remaining doubles titles. The only big news at the China Open was another sparkling performance by Matthias Bo and Carsten Morgensen, who ended up the only non-Chinese winners at the China Open. Badminton in general is dominated by the Asian countries uh, with, uh, with China leading, so it's not that surprising that they, they also leading on the men's double. In the women's singles, all eyes will be trained on Li Zuri, who grabbed the lion's share of the limelight with four Super Series titles to go with her amazing run en route to the London Olympics gold. And Li Zuri hungers for more. Uh, I want to go step by step because I want to attempt World Championships or Sudiman Cup. And maybe later I will do some championship like that when I get better and better. 
Finally, my aim is the Olympic Games, of course. Wang Yihan and Wang Shixian are set to continue their dominance. Germany's Julian Schenk will threaten the established order, having been the only non-Asian to win a leg with an emphatic win in Singapore, while Saina Newal of India or young Thai sensation Ratchanok Intanon will certainly have a say in influencing the outcome. No matter I needed uh, three attempts to win uh, a title, I made it to two finals and the third one I won and it was just an amazing experience for me and I'm quite thankful for that. Olympic men's doubles champion Chai Yun and Fu Haifeng squeezed into the Masters final in December by default after a pair higher up could not compete. They are set to continue their domination in 2013, while the much maligned pair from Malaysia Ku Kian Kiet Tan Bun Hyong has a few more opportunities to rediscover their old form if they wish to stick together as a pair. August is the month when the world celebrates champions of the world, with the World Championship scheduled in Guangzhou on August 4th to 11th. Based on the Super Series finals, where China again dominated the top categories, 2013 might not be so different from the 2012 script. One to watch, of course, is Chen Long. Fresh from his victory in the year-ender finals in Shenzhen, 2013 could mark the start of a new era for the men's singles with Chen Long as the new dominant force. The ultimate goal is the gold medal in the Rio Olympics, but I will see it every step step by step. Sharing Chen Long's lofty ambitions is Hans Christian Wittingus. The 26-year-old Dane has great designs for 2013. Yeah, my biggest dream has always been to win uh, All England, uh, and I'm definitely going to go and try and win that next year. Uh, of course, Olympics is always uh, it's also top of the list, but there's no Olympics until uh, in Rio in 16, so I'll have to do with the... Uh, all England and maybe the World Championships. We are guessing Camilla Rita Yule is savouring every moment on court as well, as she forged a combination with Christina Peterson that won the Malaysian Open in early January. Of course, it was a really big win for us in Malaysia. Uh, we didn't expect to, to win a Super Series title. We, we haven't played for so long, so of course, we were very surprised and, and really pleased about our win. Uh, now is the goal to win another Super Series. And, it's difficult now because now the other couples know uh, how we play and, and they, of course, want to stop us. There are reasons for the badminton world to be happy with the changes bound to take place in 2014. So the year 2013 provides an exciting sneak preview. Yeah, I think it's, it's going to be a very exciting year. We see a lot of um, new players challenging for, for the top spots in the world ranking and the Super Series ranking. We see a lot of um, tournaments uh, increasing in, in prize money and, and badminton is, is generally developing in a very good way the way I see it. It's going to be exciting in 2014 with the new uh, Premier Series in Malaysia, um, the new Super Series in Australia, the upgrade of the Grand Prix Gold tournaments and uh, the increased coverage uh, all over the world. I think it's, it's really, really exciting uh, still to be part of badminton right now. Looking from the outside, former Danish player Steen Peterson, who is now carving a niche as a TV commentator, believes the progress made by Thailand and Japan is good for badminton. But Peterson sees the need for former Asian giants, Malaysia and Indonesia, to step up to the challenge. And I can see Thailand and Japan coming on real strong, so hopefully uh, Malaysia and Indonesia also um, shifted into another gear and, and become a real challenge again instead of just relying on uh, Lee Chong Wei and uh, Chong Chong Yamat Liana Natsia. Badminton. No sport comes close. We're off for a break, which means it's your chance again to try and best our badminton brain teaser. How many times can a player change the shuttle in a match? The answer in just a bit. Coming up next... Masa itu... And saya cakap dengan Coach Rashid dan Coach Subok. Mungkin saya mau give up. So stay tuned to Badminton World. Hi, my name is Hans Christian Wittinghus and you're watching Badminton World. Welcome back to Badminton World. We pitted you against our badminton brain teaser before the break, but did you come out on top? The answer is... There is no rationing on shuttle. So 
So after a big rally, powerful smash, the shuttle do change its shape, size, and the speed. Now we turn our eyes to what's in store for the juniors in 2013. The world awaits with bated breath for a number of shuttlers to close the gap on the world beaters. One of Europe's rising stars, Victor Axelsson, is already an established member of the elite group and it would be interesting to see who would be following in his footsteps as we usher in the new year. Despite losing the French Open final, Axelsson seems on track in making the step up into the men's world. Axelsson's compatriot Wittingus has no doubt about that. I think it's very obvious that I would have to say Victor Axelsson in, in singles. He is an excellent player and I'm training with him every day and I'm just very, very impressed with the, the level he's playing at right now. He's for sure a lot better than I was when I was 18. Uh, and I'm sure that he will have a bright future ahead of him. Uh, he's also one of the most dedicated uh, boys I've ever seen. Um, and that goes for any kind of sport or education or anything. I've never seen a guy at this age with such dedication, so I think he's, uh, he's definitely the one to look out for in the future. With the new generation of players on the verge of taking over from the likes of Lin Dan and Lee Chong Wei, Wittingus foresees an exciting year ahead. Uh, I'm not quite sure who's uh, going to be the next one from China, but Chen Long is not that old and I saw Huan Gao play as well uh, in China Open uh, not so long ago. He did really well, so I think he has a chance of becoming a very good player as well. But I think Chin Long is going to be here for many years, so he is probably going to have a lot of good fights with both me, Jan and Victor. Although there is a glaring lack of depth among the elite players in Malaysia, the junior scene provides a glimmer of hope. But the question on everyone's lips when it comes to Malaysia is, who's next after Lee Chong Wei? Darren Wei Fong and Chan Gong Bing have been following me during training for the past three or four years. Darren and Wei Fong are at the top with Darren top 16 and Wei Fong top 21. I'm just happy I could help them. Maybe if we train together more, they can improve. If Malaysia is finding it difficult to unearth real gems, Thailand has a name to be proud of. In the women's singles, Rachanong Inthanon's impressive breakthrough to the elite belied her young age. A triple junior world champion, Ratchanok came close to a GP title before losing to Saina Newal in the Thailand Open. She is now the world number six. Her rivals are already earmarking her for greater things. From Thailand, Ratchanok Internet, she's probably uh, really, really talented and skillful. She made it already to the top ten, but also, for example, from India, Sindhu, uh, from Taiwan, Thai Jizing. They are all really skillful players. I could name some Japanese players, I could name some Chinese players. It's really good to see that there are from many, many different countries um, some youngsters uh, improving, progressing and making a great challenge to the older ones. Schenk believes in starting them young as they are the future of the sport. You need to bring in them early in the circuit because then they get the experiences, then they can go year by year uh, to the tournaments and progress, develop. Badminton. No sport comes close. Still to come, did you know that Lee Chong Wei has an addiction? No, not to drugs. No, not to alcohol. Stay with us to find out. Plus, Chong Wei reveals the true story behind his Olympic adventure and all the latest rankings. So stay tuned to Badminton World. My name is Julian Schenk and you are watching Badminton World. You are back on Badminton World. 2012 marked the end of an era when Peter Gade announced his retirement. The Danes had, throughout history, produced a stellar lineup of men's singles players on their conveyor belt. And Gade was the rightful heir to the Danish throne. For more than a decade, he had been a fine ambassador to the game. In October 2012, the world of badminton bade farewell to Gade. Yeah, first uh, thing of Peter Gade in Malaysia. The first time I saw Peter Gade in action was in Malaysia, my home ground. At that time, I was in Penang. I was either 17 or 18 years old at the academy. He won the Malaysian Open at that time, and he was just 18 or 19 years old. It was a long time ago. I have nothing but respect for him. 
He is one of the top players in the world and he is very nice. Good player in the world and we are very, very nice. Huh? We asked his former teammate about Gade's future prospects. There is actually a coaching position within the Danish national team that's vacant at the moment, so it'll be exciting to see if, if we see him uh, in the coach's chair in, in the Super Series tournament all over the world. But he's got two kids and uh, he's emphasized that he is uh, really, really keen on spending time with his kids. And the way he presents the sport, again, no matter if in Europe or all around the world, it's impressive and uh, I wish all the best for his future. And um, I'm damn sure that he will stay in the sports, being a coach or whatever. Also on Gade's long list of admirers is BWF Super Series final champion Chen Long. First, full of promotion, badminton developments, and during every matches, he tries his best to win, even though he's old and has been playing for 20 years. So it's really important to him. Gade's strength is his single-mindedness in the pursuit of excellence, as a few can testify to. Pete is very serious about everything he does. Um, when he gets an idea in his head, then yeah, he can't really let go of that idea, and he's going to work so hard to achieve, uh, to achieve it. And it's really difficult to discuss anything with Peter because if yeah, his idea is always the right idea, uh, and I think that's, that's one of the things that's taken him as far as he is now, uh, because he, yeah, he just has a strong belief that whatever he thinks is right is right, and then he's just working 100% towards that. Surely Gate has a weakness. A weakness like that, I think the obvious answer would be a red wine. He really likes that, and I think maybe sometimes too much. There was little change at the top of the world rankings following the BWF World Super Series finals in Shenzhen. Li Chongwei firmly on top of the men's singles despite pulling out from the year-ending tournament. But reigning Olympic champion Li Zuri replaced compatriot and current world champion Wang Yi Han as the world number one in women's singles. The 2012 calendar year ends with Matthias Bo, Carsten Morgensen of Denmark, Tian Qing, Zhao Yunlei of China, and Zhu Chen, Ma Jin again of China, maintaining their positions on top of their respective categories, men's doubles, women's doubles, and mixed doubles. For more information, you can, of course, visit BWF's official website. Badminton. No sport comes close. The Olympic gold medal remained elusive for Lee Chong Wei in London as he succumbed to his arch rival Lin Dan for the second time on the trot after the lopsided final in Beijing 2008. But it was a miracle he made the journey to London at all. Very few realized Chong Wei was in tears almost every night at the Malaysian training camp at Bath University as the London Olympics grew closer and that he almost threw in the towel. This is part two of an exclusive interview with the world number one player. In the first days, they are training in Olympic uh, venue, also cannot run. And when we arrived at the Hotel Games Village, I could not run properly. That was when I told coaches Rashid and Su Bok that I wanted to give up. Uh, not because of the pressure, but because I could not jump at the baseline. Neither could I retrieve the drop shots while sparring with Liu Darren. I tried to psych myself up. When I looked at Rashid and Subok and manager Chin Chai, I could not utter the words. Two days before the start, Chong Wei was still in doubt of his fitness. While the rest of his teammates were soaking up the atmosphere, he spent the days in his room crying. I wanted the Olympics to end as fast as it could. I was worried. And in the end, I psyched myself up to forget the injury and tend to it after the Games. For the first match, Sandra protected my ankle with a tape and she asked me to take painkillers and I followed whatever the doctor prescribed. 
saya dengar apa yang kita cakap and everything I can, uh, dia kasi saya saya try saja lah try and my first match my first match was a close one against the Finnish player as I won the rubber game after leading 11-10 to win 21-11 and after saya over and win direct in 21-11 masa itu match I regain my confidence confident and as we walked back to the hotel, Rashid told me not to worry too much. Gaining strength from the support he got from his family, fellow teammates and Malaysian supporters in London, Chongwe grew from strength to strength, advancing to the final much to his own surprise. My mom came, so did my wife. My family and the support from fellow Malaysians was overwhelming. I became stronger. And after it, after it, and a match to match. Everybody kept on asking, how did I manage to perform? Masa Olympic, macam mana you boleh menang Chen Long? Macam mana you find? Beating Chen Long and coming close to the final. Saya cannot believe and tak boleh percaya macam mana saya boleh main. I could not believe that I would recover from my injury despite only two weeks of preparation. But thanks to Sandra and Datuk Dr. Ramlan, my doctor, they told me it was a matter of rediscovering my self-belief. His Olympic adventure done and dusted, Chongwe looks forward to a fruitful 2013. With the stress gone and having gone through an important part of my life, which is getting married, I feel that I have done it all. For next year's preparation, I hope to take part in the first important tournament in January, which is the Korean Open, followed by the Malaysian Open. That would be an important tournament for me as it is home ground. I will also concentrate on the World Championships. What is for certain is that Chong Wei will continue to indulge in his other passion. He is addicted to shopping. I love to shop. That's how I spend all my money. Badminton. No sport comes close. The year promises to be as exciting as the 2012 circuit, if not more, with Guangzhou expected to be the highlight as it welcomes the world's best for the BWF World Championship in August. The juniors will also have their time to shine at the World Junior Championships in Bangkok in October. For more information, just visit BWF's official website. As always, before we shut up shop for another month, we leave with a collective of our favourite Super Series moments. And don't forget, if you have a favourite Super Series moment of your own, send it to us at badmintonworld at totalsportsasia.com and maybe you will see it right here next time. In addition to that, we will be chatting to another of badminton's best and showing you every flick, every smash and every point. So join us to catch up on all the big names in the biggest games of the 2013 badminton season. That's next month, so it's goodbye from us for now. From Badminton World, it's the world we know. <laughs>